ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? I want you to take your Bibles and for a brief moment here before I pray again, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 as well. First Corinthians chapter 14, it deals with tongues, but I want to pull one verse out tonight of that context, that text there, and zoom in on something that the Apostle Paul gave to the church of Corinth. That was a, uh, it was a, uh, a carnal church in many ways, the church of Corinth, here in Corinth, in First Corinthians chapter 14 tonight. I want you to look at verse number 8 with me. The scripture reads as such, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Notice, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Let's pray. Father God, now I ask again for your help because I want to be a blessing. And Lord, there's things that tonight I just need your help to say everything that I'm supposed to say to be a blessing. I pray, Father God, you'll be glorified in this message and we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach tonight, and I've entitled the sermon for us, Be Distinctive. Be Distinctive. Be Distinctive. A trumpet is a, an instrument that you find throughout the scriptures all the way <laughs> throughout the whole bible you find the trumpet mentioned it had many uses for the trumpet for instance the trumpet would sometimes be blown to prepare for war or to go into battle it would be blown to retreat to come forth from the battle it would be used as it was in the day of solomon when he was uh, crowned king they blew the trumpet and uh, Jehu, they blew the trumpet, and and uh, it it would be used for um, the the year of jubilee, the the day of uh, the uh, year of fifty, when uh, when all that was gained was released and gone back to its original owner on the on the for the jubilee, the feast of the jubilee there, that celebration, they would blow the trumpet. It would be used by the watchmen that would uh, uh, sit on the wall, and uh, the watchmen would would uh, be looking for those that maybe were coming into the city or uh, uh, whether, you know, whether they were just coming for trade or coming for, um, for battle or what have you, they would blow the trumpet to warn those within the, within the walls uh, that someone was coming. So they would blow the trumpet. Think about in our own uh, culture. Think about, uh, of course, uh, we, we have, a, we have uh, the bugle, if you will, that would be played and and, and it has many, uh, it'd be played for many things. For instance, um, it would be played uh, to prepare for battle. It would be played uh, for the retreat from the battle. Uh, it would be played when a soldier was lost in battle. I think about uh, when we did uh, uh, a brother's uh, funeral not too long ago, and he served in the, uh, in the military, and they had the honor guard there, and they... Uh, they did the 21-gun salute, and then the trumpet was played there. The bugle was played. And uh, it has many, many uh, uses. And though it's the same instrument, it's not always played the same way. It has a distinctive sound for, diff for a reason. That's important. Could you imagine if you're supposed to retreat from the battle? Or maybe go to battle and, and, and the trumpet is played to retreat. And here you are running into the battle and everybody else has already left. That could be very bad for you. <laughs> so things need to be distinctive. Are you following me tonight? They need to be distinctive. They need to uh, have a certain sound so you know what to do. Oh, wait a minute. Does that mean I go to war or does that mean I not go to war? Does that mean someone's fallen, or, or, or is it a time of celebration? You have to know the sound. It's got to be distinctive. There should be a distinctiveness 
just as there is in the sound of the trumpet in the life of a child of God. There ought to be some distinctiveness about our life. If we know Christ as our Savior, if we are saved, and yes, if we're going to be a Christian, there will be some distinctives about us. Notice the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, a very, very familiar verse, but I want to dissect it for us tonight. I'm not just going to read the verse, we're going to, we're going to dissect it tonight. We're going to look at it like we're in a, like we're in a, a biology lab. We're going, to, we're going to look at this verse tonight under the scope. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Tonight, here's my question. What becomes new? The Bible says all things become new, but what, all th what are the all things that become new? There ought to be a distinctness about it, so if things become new, then what is it that's new? Let me give you some things tonight. Number one, we have a new dominion. We have a new dominion. Take your Bibles and go to Romans chapter 6 with me, would you? Romans chapter 6 tonight. We have a new dominion. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 6, let's pick it up in verse number 8. It says, now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also, what, church? Live with him. Live with Christ. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion. You see that word? Dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Look at verse 11. What's the very first word in verse 11? Likewise. You know what that means? That means in the same manner, likewise, or in the same manner, reckon ye all, or account. The word reckon means to account. So in the same manner, account yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at verse number 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Can I say tonight, when I got saved, when you got saved, we, we got a new dominion. We've got, we got a new, uh, a new governorship uh, tonight. We are not under, under uh, this old, uh, the old flesh. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new dominion tonight. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Take your Bibles and look at verse 17. The Bible says, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Notice that word, were. What does that mean? Is that past or present tense? Past. Ye were the servants of sin. You see that? Ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Tonight, you and I don't owe this flesh anything. We don't owe that old nature, that old man, anything tonight. And Christ has saved me and set me free. Uh, in him I have, I, I'm, I'm buried with him and I'm risen with him, the Bible says. And so therefore tonight I have a new dominion. I have a new governor. I have a new power in my life over me. And, and thank God for it, amen, for light is powerful and greater than darkness. The mindset and the philosophies and the world's uh, uh, ways of doing things should no longer govern you and I. Things ought to be different in how we look at things, how we approach things, how we are in our life. So tonight, number one, a new dominion. Let me give you number two, a new direction. Take your Bibles and go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, a new direction tonight. 1 Peter 1, 14, the Bible says this. As obedient children... You see that? Obedient children, we, we are his children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former, you see that? Former lust in your ignorance. Okay, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation or way of life, way of living. So tonight we see in these verses that a child of God, what changes is their direction. 
The things I used to do, I should not do them anymore. The old man is to be dead. I owe him nothing. He does not govern me. Christ governs me. Are you following me tonight? Christ governs me, not my old man, not that old nature. Christ in me, the hope of glory. He's the one that governs me. That means that things that I would have said uh, to you, I shouldn't say to you because now I'm in Christ. The things I would have done to you, I shouldn't do to you because now I'm in Christ. You see, the old man is supposed to be dead. And we need to live and walk in the newness of life. In our life. And we can because, here again, somebody lives in here. Amen? Hey, it's not just me, it's Christ in me. He's in here tonight. He's in you tonight. We need to let him govern our life. He's there. He's there tonight. We have a new dominion. We have a new direction. Obedient children, not fashioning, not forming our ways according to the former lust in our ignorance or before we knew Christ, before salvation, before we knew what was right, before we knew thus saith the Lord. But now we know we're without excuse. And so as he which hath called you is holy, so should we be holy in all manner of conversation, in all ways of our life. Take your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. With me, if you would. Ephesians chapter 4, and look at verse 22 with me. And notice what the Bible says right here. Ephesians 4. 22. The Bible says that ye put off, here it is, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the former ways, the old man. You see that? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is what? What is he, church? He's corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And boy, let me tell you, your, my lust and your lust, they're deceitful. They'll deceive you and I. I think about what the one preacher said. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. Sin, our deceitful lust, it'll lead us in the wrong ways. Hey, but the Bible says we're to put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and, put, and that ye put on, look at verse 24, don't miss it, and that ye put on the new man. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then he tells in verse 25 to put away. Here he tells us he names some of these old man ways. This lying and speaking every man. And speak every man truth uh, with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. And be not angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Hey, he that stole still no more. He goes into this list here and he tells us. He says, hey, that old man is supposed to be dead. That old man, don't bring him up out of that grave. Let him stay dead. Walk in the new man. Amen. Walk in the new man. Put on, put on Christ. How do I put on Christ? That is, I, I look at what God says. I look at what he has for me in his book and what he tells me, and I walk in that. That's putting on the new man. Put on the new man. That means that how I would have reacted to something, I shouldn't be reacting that way anymore. I should change. Now, obviously, I don't always hit the mark. You don't either. Amen? Amen. It may not always come out, but it's maybe in here. <laughs> but that old man's still there. It's like the one fellow said, if you think you're dead, just let me hit you and show you how alive you are. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you'll come alive real quick. I mean, you know, we all got flesh, folks. I fight my flesh. You fight your flesh. And listen, what, 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 you know, what is my besetting sin may not be your besetting sin, but we all have sin. We all have moments. We all have things. But listen tonight. That's not an excuse to live in them. That's just more, that ought to create a thirst in me to say, God, I want to walk in the newness of life. I want victory in that area of my life too. I thirst for you, God, to give me victory in that area of my life. Whatever it is. You know, when we think of sin, sometimes we often think of just certain sins. But you know, my friend, there's a lot of sin. A lot of sin. You know, you know pride is a sin. Covetousness is a sin. Jealousy is a sin. Gossip is a sin. A lot of sins in the world. Defiling our bodies and 
And yes, going to places we shouldn't go. Yes, seeing things we shouldn't see. But my friend, there's a lot of other things that we do as the people of God. Not being filled with the Spirit and not caring is a sin. Be not drunk with wine or in his excess, but be filled. We are to be filled. And if we're not filled, we're not right. We ought to be working on it all the time, all the time. And boy, I tell you, if there's ever been a, a time in, a, in the history of the world when we need to be, it's this hour. It's this day. When truly we could be just moments away from a trumpet, a trumpet, a blowing, come up hither, and the sound of the trumpet shall be given, and those that know Christ shall be caught up together with them in the air that know the Lord. So tonight we see a new dominion. That's what took place at the moment I got saved. We see a new direction that ought to take place in every that takes place in our life as a child of God. Number three, a new delight. I have new delights. Take your Bibles and go to Psalm chapter one, a very familiar psalm. Very familiar psalm, Psalm chapter one. A lot of us could quote the whole psalm. It's not that long, just six verses. It's a great psalm, powerful psalm, wonderful psalm. A lot of truths, a lot of good things in this psalm. Psalm chapter 1, look at verse number 1, would you? The Bible says, blessed is the man, okay? Blessed is the man. So we're talking about how to be a blessed man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But look at verse number 2. But his what, church? Delight. His delight. Now listen, a blessed man has delights, and his delight is not in the ungodly, not in those that stand in the way, not in those that uh, are the, with the sinners, and not of those that uh, sit in the seats of the scornful. His delight is not with the mockers. You know, bef before you knew Christ, you know, we had those delights of being around those that like to maybe make fun of God, fun of church, mockery of Christianity. Maybe our delight was with those that like to do the things that, you know, we, want we don't want people to know, but, you know, except for certain people in our life. The certain things, the little party life or whatever it may be. Our, our hearts filled with, with darkness and we'd be a part of things that we should not be a part of. And that we'd be ashamed of if people knew we did them. But the blessed man is the one that delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You see, tonight, I have a new delight. My delights is not in the things that I used to delight in. There's been a change in my life. And what I used to delight in, I don't delight in. Uh, somebody mentioned it not too long ago. And that is, you know, the things that, that, that used to be so pleasurable to me. Matter of fact, somebody said this to me today. Um, when I was out at the grocery store today, somebody told me the things that were so important and the things that just seemed to me so much pleasure mean nothing anymore. Yeah, we, as you get all closer to the, to the Lord, as, as you get closer to God, that which seems to be so delightful, oh man, I've, I've got to have this and I've got to do this and I've, you know, and, and all the whatever, the partiness and all of that, that, you get closer to God, you realize you don't want that. You don't delight in those things. I don't delight in those things. I take delight in God. I take delight in God's word. I take delight in God's people, like was testified tonight by, by, by one of you ladies, that, um, that uh, what a joy and a blessing, I think a couple of you ladies may have even mentioned it, to be around just friends and family, around the people of God. Well, that's a new delight. That's not a delight you've always had. That's not always been your delight. It's not always been my delight to come to church. It's not always been my delight to be around the things of God. And even if you were saved at a young age, you've probably, we've all probably had at some point in our life where we got away from the Lord, even if it was just for a little while, and in those moments you didn't delight. But then, thank God, when you got your heart right, you delighted in what was right. Amen? 
Let me say something tonight. There's nothing wrong with, 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 with having materialistic things, but listen tonight, that's going to be here and gone. You better learn to delight yourself, especially young people. You better learn to delight yourself in things that are going to last far past an electronic. New delights. What do you delight in tonight? Listen, is church a drudgery to you? Church is not a drudgery to me. I delight in church. I take joy in the house of God. I like being in church. I like being around the people of God. I like singing the songs of God. I like hearing the teaching and the preaching of God's word. I like being a, uh, I like doing spiritual things. It's not a chore. It's a delight in my heart. I delight in it. I delight the fellowships. I, I had a wonderful time Friday night going to see the Christmas lights and and then uh, going out to McDonald's and fellowshipping and cutting up and having a good time and watching Brother Frank get himself in trouble with his wife. And, and uh, the, you know, I'm excited. I'm probably going to get uh, you know six months of marriage counseling. It's going to be great. We'll get through it. Amen. <laughs> I delight in it. It's wonderful. Isn't it good when we can laugh and have fun and enjoy each other and encourage each other? And strengthen one another in the things of God. I mean, I delight in that. You know, some people look at me like, you're crazy. I mean, what, oh, you, oh, oh, you're going to church? Almost like, oh, you poor thing. Don't feel sorry for me. I feel sorry for you that you don't, that you're missing out. You're missing out on the things of God and the blessings of God. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Listen, the, the, I know all about the party life. I know all about the, the mockers of God. I know all about being in that circle. I know all about uh, music and things of that nature. I, I used to play in a band. I've, I've been to concerts. I've, I've, I've been to several concerts and heard all kinds of music, and I've had more CDs. Uh, not CDs because <laughs> they weren't invented then. I had records and, and uh, eight, eight tracks and uh, and uh, 33s and and I uh, had uh, 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 of course cassette tapes you know that's you know so you don't know what that is we mean kids but anyway uh, I had all that stuff Romans chapter 6 is where I'm going and uh, and everything else and and uh, man and I've I've been at the uh, the parties and I've been uh, you know at the swimming pools and done all kind of the different stupid stuff you do around those things and I've been to bike week in in uh, in Florida, I've gone there to Myrtle Beach and, and walked up and down the, you know, the, drove up and down the streets and hollered and yelled and screamed and did stupid stuff and bands and went to different, uh, all kinds of places and different things I've done and seen. And you know what? All that stuff, I thought, I thought at the time, man, this is the life. Then I got Jesus. I, get my, I, get, I got right with my Lord. I was saved, but I was not a Christian. I turned my light off. I hid it under a bushel. Look at Romans chapter 6. These verses are so true. Romans chapter 6, verse 20. The Bible says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Oh, I'm thankful tonight. I'm thankful for my new delights. Those things that, uh, those things that are going to matter. I'm, I'm thankful. Listen, I'm, I'm thankful tonight for... Uh, the blessings that God has given and what God has done in my life and, and uh, of course, uh, being married for uh, uh, all these years now and three beautiful children and a wonderful home and, and a ministry and a purpose in life and, and all those things. Listen, when I was doing all those other things, I hated life. I hated people. I didn't like even myself. I didn't want to really be around people. All I wanted to do was just, 
waste my life. I was wasting my life. Listen, I've been to the end of the bottle. There's no more joy at the end than there was at the beginning. <laughs> I know all about uh, all of that stuff. I wrote songs. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah, I wrote some songs. I had a fella put music to them. One song people even liked and played at a concert. You know that, did you? Say, man, preacher, you probably feel pretty good. No, I feel like an idiot. I would to God I'd have never been there and wrote something worth singing. The end of those things is death. Somewhere out there, there's a video of me acting like a complete idiot. I hope God... It's allowed it to be destroyed somewhere along the journey. Well, I thought I was just delighting, living the, living the life. No, my friend, the life worth living is the life of Christ. Living for the Lord and knowing the Lord and walking with the Lord. I feel for people that that think that this world has something to offer them. This world, this world will only take, 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 and leave you naked and dry. This world has nothing to offer you. It has no hope, no joy, no peace, no victory. That only comes through knowing Jesus Christ. So we see tonight, number one, a new dominion. Number two, a new direction. Number three, a new delights. God changed my delights. I'm so thankful for that. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to hear a dirty joke. I don't want to tell a dirty joke. I don't want to see things I shouldn't see. I don't want to think things I, don't, I shouldn't think. I, 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 don't, I, had, I had one fella tell me, hey, you know, we're all men, and, and uh, you know, uh, just because we can't take her home don't mean we can't look at her. I said, buddy, I don't even want to look at her. I only want to look at the one I'm married to. Amen. Well, it's just a it's just a little party that'll lead to a bigger party. And they only and by the way, son is, uh, sin is pleasurable, the Bible does teach, for a season. But do you know the season ends? It's all good. It's all fun and good until someone has to pay the bill. <laughs> Guess who's paying the bill? <laughs> you are. Boy, I tell you, I, I wish I could convince. I, I wish especially, I wish I could get us all, convince myself even sometimes to just, listen, we, we worry too much about what people think. Do you know, listen, oh, these are my friends. They really care about me. They only care what you can give them and what you can do for them. They don't care about you. Care less about Listen, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the, gone to the jail and gone to the prison here, here in this city and, and, and gone in and visited people, and, and, and I've asked them, I said, well, where's your friends? They didn't come. But thank you for coming, preacher. <laughs> oh, but they had to, yeah, they thanked me for coming. I would to God they'd have just rather just come to church and learn to not stay around those people that care about them. Oh, they got my back. They only got your back as long as you're taking care of their back. They only care what you can do, what you can bring, what you can say for, to help them. Their agenda is all in themselves. Look at number four, new, a new duty. Look at what the Bible says here, a new duty. Take your Bibles and go to <coughs> Ecclesiastes.
Ecclesiastes chapter 12. <clears throat> hey, listen tonight. There ought to be a distinctiveness about us. Some things ought to change. Let me ask you something. If I walked up here and I had on, and I had a glove in my hand, I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a baseball glove, I had a ball cap on, I had cleats on, and I had a, I had a uniform on, and it said, it said, uh, well, I don't know what the new name is, but it said Cleveland Indians. What would you think I am? A ball player. There's instinctive, there's a distinctiveness in our uniforms, right? Right, Brother Frank? There's a distinctiveness. I've never seen, I've never seen a football player on the field in a baseball player's uniform. <laughs> Unless he really likes to play chicken and plans to die. <laughs> I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I, I've never seen a basketball player. I've never seen a basketball player playing basketball in the NBA with, with, with football pads on. Have you ever seen that in a ball game? No, me neither. There's a distinctiveness about a ball player. Have you ever gone to Burger King and saw the person behind the counter with a, ball, with, with a cap on that had the golden arches on it? If you had, they're confused, amen. No. You know why? Because there's a distinctiveness about that. When we think of the golden arches, the big, the big yellow M, what do we think of? Yeah, da -da 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 -da. I'm loving it. McDonald's, right? Now everybody's got to go get some fries after church tonight. There's a distinctiveness. You know, I would to God that there be a distinctiveness about God's people again. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the Bible says in verse 13, I mean a distinctiveness in every area of our life, in the way we talk, in, the, in, in every area of our life, the way we react to things, the way we handle business, everything ought to reflect Jesus Christ from the inside working out. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the Bible says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the what, church? Whole duty of man. I have a new duty. You know, before Christ, you know who I lived for? You know who you lived for? <laughs> but you know what? There ought to be a distinctiveness about you. Everybody that knows Jesus ought to be living for Jesus. He ought to, we ought to be living for our Lord. Why? Because we know he's the one that gave us life. And the only one that's given us the life worth living. That's the whole duty of man. Now, you know, I don't like the thought of just doing it out of my, it's my duty. But I do it because I love him because he first loved us, loved me. I don't want to do it out, out, of, out of duty I don't want to do it because I have to. I, I want to do it because I want to, because my God loves me and gave me a, a, a new direction. He gave me a new delight. He, he, he gave me delights that are going to be helpful and pleasant in my life, things that I want to taste. Listen, I've tasted some things that I don't want to taste again, things of the world that, 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 that leave shameful taste and and, and, and feelings upon you. I don't want that. But God has also given, God's given me some things that are good to taste. Sweet to my taste. To, things that I want more of. Hey, listen, when I, when I lead somebody to Christ, I say, man, that's a, that's a sweet taste. I'd like to do some more of that. 
when I'm reading my Bible and God shows something to me, Miss Armstrong, you testified tonight how you sought the Lord in, 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 uh, for, for something in, in, uh, in your heart there that you said, Lord, where should I read? And God took you there to 2 Samuel 22, and God encouraged you, God strengthened you. Hey, listen, that's a, that's a sweet thing. That's like God kissing you and saying, here's some sweetness. Here's, some, here's, some, here's something that you can delight in. But now, the man in the, the man in the world or a woman in the world doesn't know God. They look at that and go, boring. I'm done with this. And they go and delight in the things of the world, right? They don't care. And they think that's living, but that's dying. They're dead. They don't know what they're missing. I'm saying tonight, a new duty. God gives us a new duty, a new direction, a new delight. He, we have a new dominion. And let me give you number five, and I'm done. A new destiny. Take your Bibles and go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We have a new destiny as a child of God. I'm done right here. Don't miss it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and as it is appointed to men once to die, and after this the judgment. There was a time when if I would have died, that judgment would have been that judgment for my sin. Well, I would have stood before God and given account of my sin, and then I would have been plunged into eternally into the lake of fire called hell. But because I know Christ, because I've trusted him as my personal Savior, my destiny has changed. My destiny is not what it used to be. I was destined for damnation, but now I'm destined for glory. My destiny is with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. The Bible says we are confident. I'm confident. I hope you're confident. We are confident, I say, and willing to be either to be absent from the body and to be present with the who? With the Lord. I'm confident in that tonight. I'm confident that one day I will be with my Lord for all of eternity. Tonight, my destiny has changed. By the way, not just that eternal destiny, but my destiny from the day I got saved until today. You know, if I didn't know Christ as my Savior, I would have never met my wife. We'd never have three children. I'd never become the pastor of this church. <clears throat> I'd never got to meet, met you. Some of you may be thinking, well, that's not too bad of a thing, preacher. I don't know. But, but I'd have never got to meet you. You never got to meet me. All the souls that have been saved would have never gotten saved, probably, that I'd led to Christ. Where would I be at 48 years of age? Where would I be? I don't know. I don't even know if I would still be here on this earth. Think about that. What if the bus would have never came by and knocked on the door at our trailer park? My mom would have never let us get on the bus because the bus would have never came by because there was no bus. So then we'd have grown up. I would have probably never gotten saved. Mom, you'd still think you were okay trusting religion and not having a relationship. You'd have never met Brother Shirk. Think about that. Just let that sink in a moment. The destiny, the journey along the way. Think about all the, the laughs and the joy and the, the encouragement that there's been among us. You can take all of that and erase it like it never happened. Almost like living in a different time zone, a different, you know, where none of this ever happened. Why well, just walk in and say, hi, I'm Chris. Oh, I'm Frankie. Frankie Snyder, nice to meet you. That's it. I don't know her. She don't know me. None of this. Think about that. Boy, I tell you tonight, the life you have, you have because of Jesus Christ. Every 
every joy, every peace, every victory, all of it you have because of him. Some of you, think about, think about this. What if there was no Calvary Baptist Church in Marion? What if there was no Liberty Baptist Church in Marion? What if there was no Emmanuel Baptist Church or Oak Knoll Baptist Church? Or what if there was, what if these churches didn't exist or other, in other churches of good, good teaching, preaching churches that of like faith? What if they didn't exist? Some of you would have never heard the gospel because you heard the gospel at those churches from those pastors. Think about all the counseling, the guidance, the prayers, never been prayed. See, he changed our destiny, folks. He changed our journey. That's worthy of praise. That's worthy of honor. He changed it all at the moment of salvation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. My dominion, my governorship is new. I take orders from God. My direction, he has the path for me, I'm following it. My delights, they're new. I don't desire I don't desire the raunchy stuff of the world. I desire the good fruits of God. My duty, my obligation, but I don't do it just out of it. I do it because I love him. But I have a duty to honor him, to reverence him, to live for him, and a destiny that's new. All because of him. Tonight, think about that. Think about your God. How awesome is that? How awesome is our God? Let's bow our heads tonight. With heads bowed, with eyes closed tonight, I'm closing this in prayer. Father God, we're going to have an invitation now. Lord, I don't know in what ways that you're, you're speaking to hearts, you're tugging on hearts. But I do pray, Father God, that at this very moment, that we'll be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and that we will allow the Holy Spirit to truly speak to us and to have his way in our hearts. Help us to respond in a way that honors you and brings glory to your name. I pray in Jesus' name. Would you stand, please, with your heads bowed as the organist plays? The invitation is open. If you'd like to come tonight, you come.